The opening of every Bond movie is a very special moment. We hit the ground running while delivering the flavour and theme of the movie to follow. And of course, introduces us to the first sharp suit. And Spectre's no exception. It's always a well-fitted suit with... This, gentlemen and ladies, is an award-winning suit. It is most likely the worst fitting suit any Bond actor has ever worn. It is easily two sizes too small. You can see how awkward it moves on his shoulders. The jacket is extremely tight overall, and you can particularly see the strain on the front button. It can barely stay closed and creates an upside down V shape below the button, exposing his shirt too much and creating a distraction. The pants are too tight around the thighs and uh, other regions, creating an unpleasant anatomical look about the suit. Even if you're extremely fit, no one should be that desperate to show it off. And James Bond should always be a gentleman, no matter how muscular the actor is. You want a ripped body, not a ripped suit. The suit itself is a navy two-piece with a white shirt, white pocket square, and a navy grenadine tie. Grenadine is a Bond staple, and you can see great examples in almost any Sean Connery Bond movie. And the single vent, that vertical cut at the back of the jacket to allow movement, is also not a great choice for a gentleman. A double vent is more effective at covering your behind. Welcome back to For the Love of Suits. If you're new here, we find inspiration for how to look good in suits from the best dressed men on the screen. Today I'm coming to you from Dublin, and we're looking at the second last Daniel Craig movie, Spectre. Well, we can all breathe a sigh of relief. Thankfully, this fabulous black cashmere overcoat fits perfectly. He is looking extremely serious in a black suit, white shirt and black tie. I think the coat refutes the previous suit, showing how you can accentuate the male physique without being ridiculously tight. The waist is tapered, making the well-fitted shoulders appear broader and his waist slimmer, giving him a strong masculine look and bring attention to Daniel Craig's build without looking uncomfortable or ostentatious. Okay. So let's get over the tight fits in the single vent and move on as it's still a fine Tom Ford suit. A quality fabric which can be seen even on the screen. In real life the fabric quality would be far more noticeable. It's paired with a blue shirt rather than his standard white. Blue is actually a great choice for anyone with a red tint in their skin as it neutralizes the red. And a blue pocket square in of course a presidential fold. So if you're enjoying this video please hit that like button. It helps bring this video to the attention of other men's or enthusiasts. Thank you. Well, it seems the Aston Martin DB10, especially designed for the Spectre movie, has injected some fuel back into Bond's threads. This is his most dapper suit so far. A black herringbone peak lapel three-piece. The stripes that you can see are created by the herringbone pattern running in alternate directions. It brings a visual texture to any suit, lifting it above the ordinary. But there are two notable differences here to Bond's usual attire. The tie pin is outstanding. It is a metal bar that runs horizontally through specially crafted holes in the collar, elevating the necktie knot above the collar itself. This is a very impressive way to wear a tie, but you would want to make sure that your knot tying skills are perfect, or it will bring the wrong kind of attention. The second is the pocket square, although quite plain, for once it is not a presidential fold, but rather a very casual fold such as the slope fold. There are endless folds for pocket squares and great tutorials on YouTube to watch if you are interested. I'm really pleased with the growing community we have here. So if you haven't already, please subscribe, and I'll keep the videos coming. And in my favourite scene of the movie, there also happens to be too many fine suits to mention. But worth noting that these powerful men, no matter how evil, know how to dress the part. Villains often have the best clothes, and that's a theme for another video. And of course, there's the fabulous call out of James Bond. Welcome, James. James has switched to his casual mode for a trip to Tangier in North Africa. He's wearing the familiar Craig Daniels Ensemble, a dark polo with a light pair of pants. This is usually a black polo with white or ecru chinos, but this variation is a mid-grey pair of pants with a navy polo. Over the top of that is a suede blouse and tan colour jacket. It's a low-key yet sharp looking casual setup for hot country. Daniels usually keeps it simple but with well-cut clothing. It counts where you spend your money, rather on tailoring than brand. Where there's a will, there's a way. Just because Bond is on a train in the desert doesn't mean he isn't ready with a tux when the moment calls for it. He's wearing a slim fit, how else would it be in this movie, white wool and silk blend jacket. He has paired it with a white rib shirt, black bow tie and a red carnation boutonniere. It's a daring look that will stand out at any formal event. Connery was another Bond that wore a white dinner jacket rather than the traditional black tie and it's an obvious throwback to the jacket in Goldfinger. I'm not sure I'd wear a white jacket without getting a scuff or two. Uh, mm, looks like that's not much of a concern for Bond anymore. 
What to wear in the desert? Of course, a sand-coloured blended fabric suit. However, if you look closely, you see it is not a suit. The trousers are slightly lighter. Separates, a different jacket and trousers, is a look Bond wears occasionally. However, I believe this is supposed to look like a suit rather than separates, but it's not a good idea to wear two fabrics that are so close in colour, yet not the same. It can have the appearance of either being a mistake, or that the pants from the suit were ruined and you found a near replacement, just not near enough. This ensemble was made by Brunello Cruccinelli, of whom Daniel Craig is a big fan. It's a linen wool silk blend fabric to keep it breathable but draping nicely. It's a casual notch level two-piece suit just right for the dusty climate and paired nicely with a white shirt. Always a good choice for the heat and a brown grenadine necktie. Grenadine is a loose knit tie so if you have to wear a tie in the desert grenadine is a good choice. Tom Ford made a similar suit for the movie but Daniel Craig being a huge fan of Brunello Cuccinelli insisted on this jacket and pants. Craig had enough influence to pick wardrobe items himself in this movie, including his shoes. But I'm going to produce a separate special on Daniel Craig's Bond footwear, as I have some interesting information I got about Daniel Craig on my last trip to Savile Row. In his confrontation with Blofeld, the boogeyman of the Bond series, he is dressed in a fine wool two-piece suit, again from Tom Ford, with a white pocket square in his favourite fold, the presidential fold. The suit has a tapered waist and padded shoulders to make a more manly and strong silhouette. And I believe you can see how fine the fabric is, in which although somewhat unremarkable in texture, has quality woven throughout. And for the Spectre sartorial finale, we briefly see a fabulous three-piece check suit as Bond drives away with the girl in the car. It's a trifecta power move and suitable dramatic ending to show Bond is back on top in the finale. But of course, we know what's coming next. So thank you for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm really pleased with the growing community we have here, Seagulls. Oh my God, shut up. It helps bring this video to the attention of other men's or enthusiasts. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. Here you are, in the video. Okay? <laughs> yeah, okay, you're in the video?